What's up, y'all? It's Matt with Family Tradition Farms. Hey, we're working on the 806 again today, trying to get it ready for spring planting. Now, this tractor historically on our farm has just been a utility tractor with a loader on it. So the wheels have been spaced kind of wide for added stability. But the problem with that is it doesn't line up with our 30 inch rows. And since we're doing 30 inch row soybeans this year, I really want to make sure I'm not running over rows. But let me show you just how far off we are and what we're going to do to fix that. So if we start at the back of the tractor here, the wheels, as you can see, are pretty well spaced off from the fender. Uh, there's, there's about a 10 to 12 inch gap there. But how you do it is you, you measure from the center of your draw bar out to the center of the tire. And in this case, we're roughly 34 to 35 inches wide. Now, since we are on 30 inch row spacings, we need that to be 30 inches. That way we can run between the rows and not over top of the rows. The problem really comes up when we're side dressing and putting on our uh, liquid nitrogen. It, I can get between them, but it's not real fun. And the other side's about the same, about five inches wide. Now what we're gonna do, there's a couple options. We can either come here and loosen up those bolts and slide it in the whole hub wheel, but that's, that's not gonna give us quite enough space. So what we're going to do is we are going to loosen all of these bolts all the way around the wheel and we're going to slide this silver rim in and hook it on this lip. Now these bolts just have some clamps and they just lock on a lip. So all we got to do is loosen those up and it'll slide in and we're going to lock it on this outer rim. Now the front tires are also spaced out too wide. Those are a little bit more difficult. Never done these, and I've never done the back ones either, but from what I understand, I gotta loosen these bolts, I gotta loosen that bolt, and theoretically that should just slide in, just easy peasy, pop right in. Probably not gonna work out that way because, well, nothing's easy in farming, especially not at Family Tradition Farms. So about all we can do, probably throw some PB Blaster or WD-40 or some kind of penetrating oil on these guys. Uh, get those nuts all loosened up and slide it in. Now these tires are filled with fluid. Again, because it's a loader tractor, we wanted the extra weight and the extra ballast, which is actually why that valve stem there is uh, leaking a little bit of rust, but that's all right, not a big deal. So they're heavy, and in order to get them slid in, we're gonna have to get them off the ground. Now I can't just push them in, so we're actually gonna utilize a barn jack. Now my grandpa had this for years. I have no idea how old it is, but they actually used to lift barns with these. Old barns over time would settle and they would need to be jacked up and shimmed up around the corners. And that guy there, I don't know what its capacity is, but if it can lift a barn, surely it can lift a tractor. So we're gonna slide it underneath the, the draw bar arm right there. Hopefully get one side lifted up just enough where the tire's off the ground. Uh, and then we should be able to get it slid in. So we'll get that set up and I'll catch back up with you guys. Okay, we got it jacked up just enough. We don't want it high in the air, but we want it enough where we can slide it. So next thing to do is to pop off all these nuts. Hopefully they all come off. Then the rim should slide right in. All right, 
those are all loose and the rim even uh it even moved a little bit so i didn't want to take the nuts all the way off just because i've never done this before and i didn't want it falling on me because that's yeah, probably five or six hundred pounds and yeah i'd go squish so next thing we do is take off pretty well all the nuts maybe leave one uh just to be safe and then we should be able to take the bolts out and the clamps out and push it right in easy peasy Okay, we got all the, the, the nuts off, and uh, which is what released these clamps. These come through the backside. Uh, now, the, the problem I'm going to run into is these clamps on the backside, a few of them have to hit into these notches. It, it keeps the rim from spinning off. Uh, and the inside lip ring, these notches are in a different place. So I'm going to somehow roll this axle, which... It's connected to the rest of the tractor or roll the tire which probably isn't going to happen so i think if i release the parking brake it should allow this to spin and uh, i don't have much far to go just another inch or so if i can get that rolled then all i've got to do is get this bottom tire bottom of the tire pushed in as you can see the top's already well past where it needs to be and uh yeah we should be in good shape there so i'm gonna try to roll this and, and see if we can get it in the rest of the way okay yeah that rolled really really easy actually so probably go just a yeah, probably just a touch more a little bit more okay yeah that looks uh looks pretty square and it'll line up once i get the clamps on the back side uh, it'll actually line itself up better so now I've just got to figure out how to get the bottom shoved in. Probably going to be a probably going to be a sledgehammer because I can wiggle the tire, but uh, can't get that bottom moved in. So I'll grab a sledge, see what we can do. Yeah, that's not doing anything. That's kind of what I figured. Um, huh? Might have to do some brainstorming here. All right, I got uh, got two of these top ones lined up. That one's in the notch. That one doesn't have a notch, uh, but I still don't have the bottom slid in enough yet. So my plan now is I should be able to jack it up some more, and then once that tire gets off the ground, hopefully it'll whoop, flip into place, and then I can put all the other ones on. So that's my plan. I'm gonna get back on the jack one little tenth of a turn at a time. We'll raise her up. One down, one to go. So you can see, uh, if you wanna look at just the fender and where it hits that tire, how far over we are. That's the one that's set in now, compared to this one, where that fender hits that tire. So we still gotta move this guy in uh, by another four inches. And that put me at 31 inches from the draw bar to the center of the tire. Pretty dang close, because when you measure it out, I'm gonna be well within the 30 inch spacing of the rows so that's gonna be good enough for us um, i did go through and torque all of these bolts now they say you got to torque them run them for a few hours really and then come back and torque them again uh, my torque wrench only goes up to 250 pounds they really call for like 350 pounds so they're torqued as tight as i can get them evenly we're going to do the other side, take it out, do a little test run, probably just down the road and back a little bit. Um, and then we'll tighten them up again, probably put a big old cheater bar on it and just tighten the hell out of them. So I'm going to go ahead and jack up this other side, which is a slow, very monotonous process. But we got the jack set. We're going to get it jacked up. And well, I know how to do this side. So hopefully this one goes a little bit easier. Okay, we got all the nuts taken off. Uh, this wheel wasn't near as easy as the other side to get it rotated so that the uh, locking knocks uh, line up. But we got her done. Um, I got the top one put in. 
now just like the other side i'm gonna go back and jack it up again so as this gets higher and the tire actually comes off the ground it should sweep underneath and um and hang there so i'm gonna put you guys down for a second and jack it up and we'll see if she can slide underneath Cool. It's now hanging. You can see it kind of wiggles free. So she'll be able to go through now, get all of our clamps put on the back side, get our nuts put on. We got all the nuts put on. Um, the wheel is still up in the air. So at this point, we're gonna put the impact on a, a lower setting, that way it doesn't over tighten them. And we're just gonna go around in a typical star pattern. Um, that way everything cinches down. You don't pull one side tighter than the bottom side because then you'll get wobbles as you're going down the road. So I'm gonna put the impact on low and uh, go around in a star pattern, like I said, get these tightened up. Uh, then once they're semi-tight with that, I'll put the torque wrench on them, get them set to 250 pounds, and then we should be good for a test drive. Okay, that's all of them on the uh, low setting. I'm gonna bump it up one more setting. Uh, this is the Milwaukee uh, half inch impact. It's got four settings. We were on two. We're gonna go to three just to give them one more little ugga dugga uh, before I put the torque wrench on them. That way I'm not having to ratchet the torque wrench a whole bunch. Okay, so I actually had to go through and loosen these bottom half bolts. When I got done, I got to looking at them and the bolts down here were sticking out a lot farther than the ones up there were. Um, evidently, I, I torqued the bottom ones faster than I did the top ones. Uh, so that would have caused the wheel to wobble in and out, um, which <laughs> is not real fun to go down the road with. So I just loosen those and then tighten the top ones up uh, to where a little bit of thread was showing and then went back through and did my star pattern again. Now they're all pretty close uh, to the same amount of thread showing. They're at least close enough to, uh, to go ahead and torque them down and see what happens when we take her for a test drive. So again, we're gonna torque in the same star pattern as what we impacted. So the impact gets them tight. But that torque wrench, it shows I still got a ways to go before they're all the way tight. So the torque wrench is gonna start beeping at me quickly when I get close. And then when I'm at 250, it'll have a solid beep. So listen close to it. See, it went to a solid beep. So that one's set at 250 pounds. We'll move on to the next.
Well, there we go, folks. I uh, got them set in, got them torqued down. We are ready to go for the test drive. Uh, now, originally, I had thought about moving the front wheels in, but after I got these back set in, I measured the very outside of the back tires uh, to the outside outside, and they're pretty well spot on with outside of the front tires. And, and last year, the front tires really weren't a problem with running over corn uh, as I was side dressing anyways. So I'm just gonna leave them where I'm at, where they're at. Honestly, it'll probably help with stability when we put the loader back on. So I think we can probably call this project done. I'm gonna take it for a little test drive down the road, come back and recheck my, my torque on my, my wheel bolts. But as long as everything goes smooth, we should be done. Well, I'm gonna call it a day. I got the wheels slid on in on the 806, went ahead and ran down to the barn, got the planter because I got a little work I need to do to it before planting comes around. And it gives us a great opportunity to see just where the wheels are gonna ride between the rows. Evidently last year, my tires being just four inches out was causing some sidewall compaction on row number two and row number five. So that should help yields and emergence this year. All in all guys, this was super easy. Watched a few YouTube videos on recommendations on how to do it. So if you guys have any questions, comments, drop them down below. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video. Thanks guys, and y'all have a good one.